So for those of you that are new, um, I'm Ann, I'm Ann Tucker, and I started Wisdom Soup about four years ago, and I can't believe how the time flies. It just blows my mind. It's probably been more than four years, and I'm losing track. <laughs> But we, uh, we are a community of people who are into the woo, that we explore all kinds of topics. Anything that is spiritual is fair game. So, um, and we have, if you look in the, if you are, if you joined us through the meetup group, you will see that there are, you can see the past list of topics that we've had over the past four years. And they run the gamut from dragons and dream interpretation and and quantum physics and I mean, everything, anything that sounds fun. And we've done sound healings and just everything. And it's really whatever sounds like fun, whatever sounds interesting. You come in with an open mind and, and, and I always come away learning something. Um, so tonight is going to be more awesomeness. Um, we have uh, for our presenter tonight, um, uh, Teresa Micheletti, and she is she is a, uh, a she teaches hypnosis and has been doing that for literally over 25 years. She's traveled all around the country. Um, she was the director of hypnosis for Sylvia Brown, and for now for um, the Premier Hypnosis Training Center is where she's currently the director of hypnosis. And anyway, she has an amazing um, technique to share with us tonight called mirroring. Um, and she told me about it. And I thought, wow, that is something that uh, that our crew would really, really like because it's super accessible. It's the kind of thing where whether you are a pro channel that you've been channeling for a long time, that you are always in contact with your guides, this is just another tool to add to your toolkit. So it's a, it's another technique, um, which is so much about how we build our, our gifts, right, is through learning different techniques and different approaches. Um, and if you have never channeled, this is a super accessible way. So tonight could be your first time if you've never done it before. So, which would be really cool. So, um, so just come into it like with an open mind, be ready, be willing to be surprised. You never know what's going to happen. And, uh, and I'd love to introduce you to the amazing Teresa. All right, Teresa, welcome to Wisdom Soup. This is your first time presenting with us. Yes. Yes. And you're joining us from... From Monterey County, Central California. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it to you, Teresa, to lead us on this adventure, learning how to do mirroring. Please tell us all about it. Okay. So this is my version of the mirroring meditation technique. Uh, one of we used to have um, weekly trance classes with spirit guides. And one of the spirit guides was a master teacher called Rahim. And this was via Sylvia Brown. She's a full trance medium or was a full trance medium. She'd go sit on a bench on the other side and a spirit guide would come in. And in 1994, Rahim shared this technique. He explained that mirroring was like Aborigines dream time or Native American dream walking or sleepwalking. It's not like looking in your bedroom mirror. Rather, it's like addressing someone's soul safely in a transcendent mirror. So it's shifting a little bit higher in vibration and mirroring sessions are often focused on one person coming into the mirror and you address them, living or dead. However, during this session, since it's a sampler, we're going to do many, many possibilities of using the mirror. So in a moment, you might want to get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen because we're going to alert some of the souls that you might want to address. So um, make sure that if you're listening to this at a later time or even right now, if you're in a car or using heavy machinery, this is not the time to listen. So you need to be in a safe, quiet place because it's actually gonna be a meditation, hypnosis, and we want everyone to be safe. I use this technique when working with individual hypnosis clients. I've also used it teaching spiritual classes and hypnosis classes. And I first used it um, in Sylvia's uh, hypnosis school. So if you have your piece of paper, write down who you would like to connect with during this session 
So if they're on the other side, say at Andromeda, they have a heads up so they can get to the mirror. You'll have a few opportunities to address souls living or dead during this session. So first, think of someone you would like to connect with, maybe someone you've lost track of, or even a pet that's passed away. Whoever you would like to connect with. Second, Think of someone living or dead that you want a resolution with. Third, think of someone you love dearly, living or dead. Fourth, think of someone you have a problem with. It could even be a child, a co-worker, whoever. Fifth, we're going to ask your spirit mind, your soul to address someone you may not have thought of consciously, but your higher self or your soul wants to address. And sixth, Maybe you have questions about an illness or a situation, and we're going to ask for someone who has answers to come to the mirror for you. So we'll start with those and others may come too. So since this will be from the spiritual perspective, take what rings true to you and let the rest go. So maybe you refer to the word creator or source instead of God. So replace that idea with your word. If you don't believe something I say, just let that idea drop away. First, we're going to address and ask angels to clear the room that you're in. To fill that room with positive white light. And we're going to put protective platinum columns of light in the corners of your room. We're going to ask for angels to stand guard and ask the angels to address your higher consciousness, your higher self, to determine who should be allowed into this session. Be aware that most people in the mirror will communicate telepathically you will just know what they are communicating. They rarely say things out loud. And yes, pets do communicate telepathically in this realm. Now your soul or spirit guide may have a different journey in mind during this time and that's okay. Just go with the flow. Ready, start mirroring. Okay, find a comfortable position Close your eyes when you're ready. Take a deep breath, breathing in and out. Think of breathing in positive energy and breathing out anything that's negative. Allow your tensions to drop away. Each, is, each of us stores information differently. You know what a mirror is. You might get a feeling for a mirror. You might visualize it. You may just have a knowing. You may sense a mirror or see the mirror in your mind's eye. Some people just get flashes of color and they know what those colors represent. So however the information comes to you, just go with it. Just follow my words, breathing in the positive, and breathing out the negative with every breath you take. Now think of surrounding yourself with a bubble of white light, a protective bubble. Know this is possible. You can mentally surround yourself with a bubble of white light. Take a breath and let the concerns of the day just drop away. Breathing in the positive light and breathing out the negativity. Let your thoughts and cares drop away. 
If you wish, mentally surround yourself with angels. Now, think of a velvety blue night sky. You can almost melt into that night sky. You notice a small bright dot of light getting brighter and coming closer to you and closer. As it gets nearer and nearer, you realize this very small bright blue white star with silvery edges. And then the star merges right into your forehead, into your third eye. You almost feel a lightness and energy. You may feel something has opened. Allow this star and keep this star in the middle of your forehead. You are in charge and you won't go anywhere you don't wish to go. We're going to ask for the guardianship of your mind to protect you. So let your conscious mind drift and sense your mind drifting. Let your soul mind take over. Suddenly you sense you are facing an ornate full length mirror with gold scrolling around the edges. You are standing in front of the mirror reflecting yourself. Sense yourself in this mirror. You may feel yourself, see yourself, sense yourself. A calmness may come over you. You take a breath. Mentally, just ask for anyone you need to address to come show themselves in the mirror. Do not wave anyone away if they're unfamiliar. Ask them to give you a message. The message may be telepathic. You can mentally ask whoever is there to speak or verbalize any message for you. At first, the image may seem fuzzy because you've taken up the space in the mirror. Suddenly, superimposed on your form reflected is another person. It may be someone from your past or someone you have not met. Perhaps a master teacher or a guide. Allow them to give you any messages they have. Is there anything you want to ask them? Anything you want to say to them? Now your choice, from your consciousness, choose someone you want to connect with, living or dead. Mentally ask for their spirit to attend you in the mirror. Speak to them. They might respond or they might just listen. Don't be afraid to say what you really feel. What would you really like to say to them? Do they have any messages for you? Now, choose someone you never had a resolution with and put them in the mirror, living or dead. 
Ask mentally for their spirit to attend you in the mirror. Speak your mind and plead your case. They might respond or they may just listen. You may say things you would never say to their face. Don't be afraid. Say what you really feel. What would you really like to say to them? Can you add anything to resolve the situation? Or just venting is also fine. Now we are going to neutralize the situation. Because you are going to send them a bubble of love, God's love from your heart and bless them for allowing that lesson to take place. You realize when you send them love, it's reflected back to you. So breathe in that love that's coming back to you. Now, Reflect someone you love dearly in the mirror, living or dead. Maybe someone in your family, a friend. Maybe someone you never told that you loved. Put them in the mirror. Tell them how you feel. Tell them why you love them. Allow them to respond. Do they have any messages for you? Now send them a bubble of love from your heart. Let that love get reflected back to you. If you have anything else to say to them, do that now. If they have more messages, just listen. Suddenly, your mirror opens up. You didn't realize there were hinges on the side of the mirror. More mirrors open out until you have at least four or five mirrors. People will come to you in these mirrors. 
it's okay if you do not recognize them. They may be a great grandparent or someone from another time. Do not wave people away. Listen to their messages. Spirits fill the mirrors. Send love from your heart to all of them. Do any of the spirits have more messages for you? Do you need to resolve issues with any of the spirits? Any other messages? Anyone else in the mirrors? What do they have to say? Tell them how you feel. Send more love to all in the mirrors, neutralizing any negative towards you. Send your love from your heart and let it be reflected back to you from the mirror. Now, focus and choose someone you are having a terrible problem with. Perhaps someone who cannot seem to change, even a child. Perhaps someone who seems uncontrollable in their lifestyle. Put that person in the mirror. Plead your case through rational reasoning. Keep emotion out of it. State things rationally. You do not need to like them. Just mirror your spark of love to them while you're petitioning them so negativity is neutralized and no longer affecting you. Let the love be reflected back to you from their mirror. Get out your feelings, your truth. And at the end, send love and blessings, neutralizing them. And neutralizing the situation. So that the love and blessings are reflected back to you.
send love the whole time and you can still have righteous anger to plead your case. Let them hear your truth. Wish them well and send them your blessings. Thankful for any lessons you have learned from them. Take a deep breath. Now, maybe you want someone to answer questions about an illness or a situation. So we'll ask for someone with answers to attend you in the mirror. Do they have other messages for you? Send them love and blessings and sense that love and blessings coming back to you. Who else is in the mirrors that you need to address? Do they have any messages for you? Check the other mirrors, who else is there? Even if you don't recognize them, they may still have a message for you. You can address anyone you want and ask any specific person to come in spirit so you can address them in the mirror. It could be a person you love or anyone you want to communicate with safely, especially anyone who does not want to talk to you right now or someone you're afraid to talk to on the earth plane. You can talk to anyone and say anything safely. Take a breath and gather up the pink bubbles of love and send your love to each person in each mirror and let it get reflected back to you. Neutralize anyone who was negative towards you and send them blessings. Take a deep breath. Keep that brilliant star in your forehead. If you want to increase your own psychic insight and healing ability, keep that star. It's your personal star. The more you do this mirroring, the more people will come in. Past life people will come in and infringements on your spirit will be addressed. You can get rid of a lot of sludge. You can get infusion and messages may come. 
Mirrors are a very strange phenomenon. Mirrors are a dimension warp we can use to make our lives a bit easier. Even if you just stood in front of the mirror and got nothing but your own reflection, it's okay. Keep practicing, like riding a bike. If you keep doing it, you'll get better at it. Keep practicing mirroring and spirits will come to the mirror. Using this mirroring tool, you can safely meet people face to face. Mirroring can make your life journey easier. Sense that mirror in front of you and sense your reflection in the mirror. If you are in pain or any discomfort, put a fiery red hot light at the base of the pain or discomfort. See that red fiery light at the base. Let it burn out. Then pluck out that pain out of the reflection. Neutralize it and give it to a host of heaven, an angel or God to take away. Now see yourself in the mirror and make it the best version of you, healthy and fit, productive and motivated, the healthiest, most vital you in the mirror. Gather up all of the reflected love from this session and breathe it in. Let that love permeate every cell, every organ, every muscle, every nerve. Let that love flow through you from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Breathing in that love. Ready to come back, feeling wonderful, energy coming up, conscious coming to the foreground, subconscious receding, fully and totally awake and alert, ready to do anything you need to do. Be kind to yourself after this session. You might want to rest or drink water and make sure you're fully back before you drive anywhere. Take a breath and come back to yourself. Of course, this session was a sample of possibilities. By doing your own personal meditation, you can spend the time you need to fully address anyone in the mirror. Or if you want to be guided, a hypnotist or healer can facilitate a private mirroring session for you so that you aren't interrupted in the middle. Some people don't get anything or just sense their own reflection. Keep practicing like riding the bike. Sometimes it takes practice, a while to tune in. On the other hand, some people go too deep and beyond and use the mirror like a portal, like Alice through the looking glass. In that case, tell yourself that you're not going to go as deep and concentrate on the reflection of yourself in the mirror. Practice sticking people in the mirror. If you didn't get anything this time, then stick someone in the mirror, your ex-husband or your child, and mentally think of addressing their higher consciousness and see if they have a message for you. You're talking soul to soul, which comes in handy when you don't wanna directly talk to someone or confront them. If your mirrors did not stay still or started spinning, then tell the mirrors to slow down. You can also use mirrors to heal people. Put the ill person in the mirror and see them getting well. Envision them 
with the systems in their body working at their perfect optimum, their cells all moving to perfect optimum health, their skin and hair glowing. See or sense yourself in the mirror and pull out any pains and throw them away, neutralize them and see yourself getting better. You can also use it to manifest things. So put yourself in the mirror and manifest the fit body you desire, the muscles you want to have, the health you want, the vigor and stamina you want. Being more agile and limber, vibrant, even younger. You can draw on this, it's called imitative magic. You can even manifest money See yourself dressed nicely in the mirror, holding money in your hands. If you do this more than once, it compounds. Does anyone want to share anything that they experienced? Hey, you guys, did anybody have a, a something show up in the mirror that was interesting? Oh, yeah, Jenny, Jen, Jennifer, let's hear from you. Hi. Um, first of all, I'm honored to be here. So thanks for uh, letting me join you. Um, letting me, like, letting, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> um, so I had, um, there's a woman that I have historically in my career run into. She was a horrible woman and she was mean. And I did a past life regression and she showed up and I understood why there was this bad connection. But anyway, so she showed up and I like, when you were saying, say what you're thinking, say what you feel. And I'm like, you are such a, you know, and I was using all these horrible, terrible words, which I won't repeat on, on video <laughs> on recording, but I was just like, you were such a nasty woman and on and on and on and on. And then at the end I'm like, and I forgive you. I forgive you and I understand our past lives together and I forgive you and I release you. So that actually felt really, really good. You know, I don't think I'd ever be her best buddy again, but, or ever, but um, it felt really good to see her there and her spirit and, um, and just say, I get it. I honor that relationship and I forgive you and I release you and send you love and let you go. Very that was cool. the most, pro yeah, that was the most profound one. So thank you. Yay. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. How about anybody else have one to share? You did make me, Jen, just made, you made me think of one that I should have used. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah, right. <laughs> anybody else have one that came forward? Something to share? I'm listening if, for you. If you think of something, then just interrupt. Yeah. If you got an unknown elderly person, it was probably a master teacher. So pay special attention to the messages. Sometimes you get symbols in the mirror, like a mean person may turn into a snake or something. Sometimes past life people will come in, especially if there's karmic issues that need to be addressed. Sometimes your mirrors show people that you can get into one session, um, you might need more than one session to deal with someone. And that's okay. Do part of it now and part of it another time. If someone is difficult or mean, you can neutralize the energy. So send them love while you're you doing your righteous anger, as was said just before. And then that energy between you gets neutralized. Demand the change that's needed. Tell them to back off. Tell them that they need to be full of justice. Tell them that you want it to be treated respectfully and you expect them to treat you so. Be exact in what you want. You don't need to know the person in the mirror. Often, uh, past life people or relatives that you don't recognize will come and give you messages. They may come to ask for forgiveness. So ask what they have done to you. Uh, maybe 
ask what you can do for them and then think about how it can be resolved, whatever the issue is. If you're angry with someone in the mirror, then be angry, but you can also transcend that anger. So be righteous in your anger, but send them love at the same time so you're neutralizing. Don't wish bad things upon them. It was an experience for you to learn but speak your mind, tell your truth. Your goal is to have them understand your truth. Then you can send them love and neutralize. You can use this for anything living or dead. I was thinking of using it for my olive tree because I'm allergic to the olive tree. So I needed to uh, stop growing so well needs to uh, diminish its energy so that I can deal with it. Maybe you have a wild animal that's bothering your farm. Then talk to that wild animal in the mirror. You may find that using one mirror at a time works for you and other people may find they're surrounded by mirrors. Just go with the flow and keep practicing to get better at it and use the mirrors however it best fits you. Of course, this was a sampler. So just do what you can at this point in time and decide how else could you use the mirrors to help you. It's especially nice to have relatives that you love come to the mirror, whether they're living or dead. You don't need to know the person in the mirror. Sometimes they just come because they love you and they want to connect with you. And that's okay too. So just be able to go with the flow and see what comes to you. And remember, it's like a bicycle. You may not get all the information this first time, but keep practicing and people will come to the mirror. Anyone have any questions? Edie wrote in the comments that she said that the writer of uh, Women Who Run With Wolves, that, sh that she reaffirmed uh, Edie's anger, then helped her release it with love. And she said she doesn't know what she actually looks like, but she knew it was her, which is very cool. Um, yeah. And uh, Rebecca says, that was beautiful, Edie. And Michelle says, a group of Native Americans circled me for a healing as they chanted to my heart and spoke words of wisdom to my thoughts. Ooh, I want yours. That sounds really cool. <laughs> That's a good one. So, um, so Teresa, tell me what got you uh, into you've been you've been involved in hypnosis your whole life. What drew you to hypnosis? Um, my dentist taught me not my dentist. My doctor taught me hypnosis. Um, he was learning hypnosis, and I was one of his guinea pigs. So uh, I used it at the dentist. I'm allergic to Novocaine. So when I would go to the dentist, like from 11 on, I would use it to go to the dentist. I don't use any anesthesia. And I would use it, um, when I was in high school, I used it because I pulled some muscles in my neck, my back and my leg when I was playing volleyball. I went out by the pool and made all the panko went in. And I thought, what if you broke your leg and you made the panko? <laughs> <laughs> I stopped using it for a while. And then um, Francine, a spirit guide, said I needed to take the hypnosis class. So I took the hypnosis class and I started doing hypnosis around the United States and um, mostly past life regressions. So how effective was that for you uh, in terms of like when you were, if you're going to go to the dentist or have some sort of a procedure when you would normally would have anesthetic, how could you actually feel any pain or was it, were you completely clear? Uh, I could feel things, but I, it, most of the time they would ask me if I was awake because it's sort of a meditative state and uh, made the pain go away. I do the same thing for surgery. I've had hip surgery and I didn't have any pain afterwards. Wow. They ask you, what's your pain level zero to 10 or one to 10? And I'd say zero. No, honey, what's your pain level? <laughs> <laughs> So Denise is asking, what's the best path to take to learn hypnosis? She'd like to add it to her toolbox. Come study with me. I'd be glad to have you. 
So here, here is Teresa's um, contact info. Um, and Teresa, do you offer, do you train people how to do hypnosis? I train people, uh, well, I'm going to train people in the fall. I usually train them two or three times a year. And okay. it's a seven day intensive class. How many where, days? Sorry, I, I missed that. How many days intensive? Seven day intensive okay. class where you practice um, with people in person. Super. And then if you want to be certified, then you have more practice at home okay. and requirements at home if you want to be certified, but just to learn it. Um, and then we have volunteers come and you have a practice person that you've never seen before at the very end, but there. you practice each other and it's kind of fun. That is very cool. I, I put her, I just put Teresa's contact info in there, Denise, if you wanted to see that. So you could contact her on her website too. Um, and Rebecca is saying, I have recently learned I have a, oh, sorry, Rebecca, do you mind if I share that? You sent it. Is it okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. She says, um, I recently learned I have a council of seven who have been helping me uh, my whole life. I uh, heard I didn't have enough mirrors and I needed seven so they could show themselves to me. Oh my gosh, how cool they did. <laughs> that is awesome. That's really cool. Wow. You guys had great experiences. That is amazing. That is so cool to hear. Wow. Well, any other questions for Teresa about hypnosis or about the experience or about your own experience? Was there anything that came up that you didn't understand or thoughts about what you might want to do, do with this tool? It really is another, another tool in your toolkit, things that you can use. And I love some of the examples that you gave, Teresa, about using this in terms of, of uh, like, if you do have a conflict with someone, can you resolve it on the astral, right? If you're, if you can't make any headway with somebody, maybe you have a grumpy neighbor, <laughs> you know, who's got a barking dog or something. And how can you, can you negotiate with them through the mirror? So if you, if you happen to have a, um, any info on that class in the fall, Teresa, maybe people could email you and you could send out the information for them if they're interested. Yeah. I, okay. that's a classic hypnosis class where you learn how to do hypnosis by uh, relaxing people and having to do hypnosis. But it also includes um, a little bit of spiritual hypnosis and a little bit of NLP. So you learn spinning and you learn some of the other kind of things. I also Very teach cool. hypnosis. So those are powerful tools. Yeah, NLP is a, that's in another really powerful tool. tool. That sounds like a great class. Um, so, uh, so, uh, Lourdes, is it okay if I, I share what you wrote? I, um, yes, yes. Oh, thanks. Okay. Cause it came in private. It says, okay. So Lourdes was saying, I received specific information of what to do about an issue that I'm dealing with. Also a person that I used uh, to, used to have issues with showed up and someone came and kicked far away. Um, and that was a big relief. Also you see, oh, see it showed up and someone came and kicked far away. So they were kicked far away. Kick her far away. Oh, you kicked her far away. <laughs> that had to feel really good. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Michelle is saying, can you have more than one person when dealing with a conflict in the mirror, like more than one person in one mirror? That's a good question. Yeah, you could have more than one person in one mirror or side by side mirrors. So you kind of have like, if there's like three people in the conflict, you can kind of put them all next to each other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can I ask see. a question? Yeah. <laughs> so I had somebody show up in the mirror who is, I don't know, he's kind of a dark Toltec guy. I know him in person. I try to keep him out of my mind's eye because I don't want him interfering with me. So he showed up and it was fine that he was in the mirror. Um, I asked him how he was and he said fine and whatever we had a little exchange but now I can feel him in my mind's eye where I don't want him <laughs> so how do I keep him in the mirror <laughs> and not in your head I didn't invite him in he he was when we were in that thing like when he just showed up unannounced and he used to use mirrors to I know kind of like spy on people and I'm like oh this is how you do it and he's like, yeah, anyway, but now I can feel him still in my mind's eye and not in, how do I keep him in the mirror? Or <laughs> get him away from your presence. I would, if you believe that he's, uh, has dark intentions, then you can call on a carrion angel and they'll take him away. 
otherwise just call on archangels and they can um, escort him away from you. Okay. Thank you. All right. And then uh, Michelle, if you end up having any issues with that, let me know. Okay. Okay. If it becomes an issue, just send me a, send me a text or a DM okay. and I'll help out. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Um, uh, all right. Anybody else have anything come up? Very, very cool experience. It looks like a lot of people. I think I'm going to, next time, I'm going to sit in on some of yours. <laughs> I want to sit in on the Native American one. I'm scrolling through here. Who's do I want to jump in on? <laughs> I want to jump in on several of these. They look really amazing. So, Teresa, thank you so much. What a cool tool to share. Really appreciated it. And, uh, and it sounds like um, that class that you have coming up. So do you do just the one class in the fall or do you do, do you do it? So you have the seven day intensive. Do you have anything that's a little bit less intense, like a shorter thing to get somebody who's just uh, looking to use it for themselves? I have an introduction class, which is just like a one day, how to do self-hypnosis. Oh yeah. I have uh, a number of advanced classes, which aren't up right now, but uh, taking people to temples on the other side, that there's 21 temples that you can go to that are helpful on the other side, and uh, how to do past life regression separately from, you learn past life regression in the classic hypnosis class, but if you were a hypnotist and you weren't uh, trained in that, then there's another class where I do taking people to heaven and um, past life regression. Super cool. Well, so anybody who maybe what, what you could do is anybody who would like information on the classes, just drop her an email. And then maybe Teresa, you could just send out a, maybe a one pager with, with what, what you have coming up both for the more intensive ones and the, the ones that are shorter for people who just want it for, rec you know, for their own use. Cause I think that might be some of us might just be interested to have it for, you know, to use for yourself. So, all right, you guys, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Teresa. I loved it. It was really cool. I had a very good experience myself. And, uh, um, and then just for you guys to know, um, I mentioned it at the beginning, but we're, so for our meetup next month, I'm in the process of trying to get back into our space for in-person meetups again. So we'll still stay on Zoom. So for those of you who are not local, we'll, you'll still join us just like you are right now, but we'll also have an in-person thing in Bellevue like we used to before COVID. Um, so that if you are local and you want to connect with people, then you can. And the whole idea is so that so that you know you can have more of that sense of community, which is I think so valuable. So um, so it will be great to see some of you in person. And for those of you who are far away, come visit. <laughs> it's always going to be on the second Thursday of the month. So so you can just put it on your calendar and know it's going to happen. But you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa. I loved it. That was super, super cool. And I'll be um, posting the recording to our YouTube channel and to our Facebook page. And I'll send it out on email as well. Thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Um, everybody's saying thank you so much. That was wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you. So grateful. So many wonderful things. Thanks a lot, you guys. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.